So with the update to iPadOS 26, Apple really revitalized and changed up what it meant to multitask on the iPad. They're now mimicking a little bit more of what macOS looks and feels like with the new windowing mode, the new traffic light management system, and you're either in one of two camps. You're like myself, who's been wanting and yearning for the iPad to be treated seriously as more of a computer replacement, or you're in the other camp where you just use your iPad as an iPad and you wanted to stay that way. And the good news is that you can actually have best of both worlds now with how Apple's really implementing all the new multitasking features. So in this video, we're going to go through and walk through all the different nuances that you have. So if you do want to use your iPad as an iPad, I'm going to show you how. But if you want to use your iPad as a computer with multitasking, I will also show you how. We're going to be going over all the changes with 26, 26.1, and now 26.2 that's in beta because they continue to iterate and evolve what multitasking means on the iPad. So without further ado, let's dive into iPadOS 26 and the multitasking specifically so you can become a pro and get the best of both worlds whenever you need it. Let's get into it. But now before we continue, if you do enjoy videos like this one where we do in-depth walkthroughs on some of Apple's updates, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. But now let's get back into the compatibility of iPadOS 26. So from a compatibility standpoint, iPadOS 26 and specifically the multitasking, as long as your iPad can run iPadOS 26, you will be able to handle all the multitasking things that I show you in this video. There are a couple caveats, especially with extended monitor support that I'll mention throughout the video, but at its core, 90% of the functions, maybe even 95% of the functions you can do on the $279 iPad 11 that you can also do on the almost $3,000 fully loaded iPad Pro, which is something I didn't think I'd be able to say when Apple was going to bring this new multitasking focus. Forward. So let's get right into the iPad and start off with the basics and then work our way up. So let's hop right in and the first thing I want to do is touch on the settings, right? Because there's a new form of multitasking, but there's also an old way and you still have the original way, right? So you have three new options of multitasking. You have your full screen applications, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's full screen, the way that we've known to grow and love it. So if you open up any application, it'll go full screen and we'll dive into that one a little bit more. Then you have stage manager, which is the first t attempt at kind of multitasking in windowed mode that iPadOS and Apple gave us, which again, I didn't, wasn't a huge fan of Stage Manager to really begin with. You can see that it was a little bit wonky and things like that, but Stage Manager still kind of sort of works like the full windowing mode, but we'll touch on that in a second. And then lastly, if you go back into our settings, you have your window mode. So you're able to resize and arrange multiple windows in a single space with multitasking and ease. First with Stage Manager, you can still arrange those windows across multiple groups for focused multitasking, but you also have your side panel on the left-hand side, your dock on the bottom. So it's a little bit more familiar in terms of multitasking when it comes to what we've known in the past. But for most of this video, we're gonna stay in this windowed mode because that's where all the multitasking gestures are. Now to answer the first question, if we go into the full screen application, you do not have the old forms of multitask. So for instance, if you do open just a regular window like Safari, it's gonna go into that full screen mode and you can see that it's doing that. But if you do wanna multitask in here, there isn't the old form of slide over or the old form of something like let's say split view. So if I grab this and I try to move it out of the way or try to open it up in a different window, or if I grab another application and try to pull it up here, it's just not gonna work. So full screen mode is exactly what it sounds like. It's limited to only one application at a time. The only thing that you can do here is, if again, if I'm here and I wanna open up Twitter, I can then go over here and still slide between the applications like I would with the bar or with three fingers in terms of multitasking that way. So that is the only real form of quote unquote multitasking in the full screen mode and everything else has been saved for the multi-windowed mode. So let's go over there to the settings and kind of open that up. So let's go into the windowed mode and the first thing that's going to change is going to be how you interact with these applications. But now, before we continue, a quick word from our sponsor, Nomad Eason. So as someone who travels outside of the country a few times a year, whether it's for work or for personal, one of the best things to ever come to iPhone was eSIM. It was first introduced back in 2018 alongside the XS and the XS Max, and then it became an exclusive form of SIM card here in the US in 2022 when Apple released the iPhone 14 series. And that shift to eSIM made it extremely easy to get instant data anywhere you are and avoid those exorbitant roaming fees you get from your carrier back home when you are traveling overseas. And that's where Nomad eSIM does come into play. They make it super affordable, super easy, and they provide instant data no matter where you are. And on top of that, they give you a free trial to make sure that wherever you're going, you have your eSIM connected and ready to go before you even land. Getting set up with Nomad eSIM is extremely simple and it takes less than five minutes. And for me, it took even less than two minutes. All you have to do is download and open the application, which I will leave linked down below. You pick your country, choose how much data you need and install with one tap or with the QR code provided. And like I said, in under two minutes, I had this thing ready to go and set up. So when I do land overseas, my eSIM is ready to go and I have instant data connection without having to accrue those roaming fees from my other carrier. 
Nomad eSIM has plans starting for as low as 54 cents here in the US per gigabyte, which is absolutely unheard of. And it works in over 200 different countries and has a 4.8 star rating in the App Store. And on top of that, for 9 to 5 Mac viewers, if you use the code MAC25 at checkout, you'll get an additional 25% off, meaning that per gig in the US, it could be as low as around 38 cents, which is, again, mind blowing. So if you do have some sort of trip planned, whether it is for work or for leisure with your family or by yourself, I definitely recommend giving Nomad eSIM a try. Give their free trial a go. It's a one gigabyte for three days to see if you like it or not and get the extra 25% off using the code MAC25 at checkout. But big shout out to Nomad eSIM for partnering up with 9 to 5 mac on this video. Everything will be linked down in the description below. And now back to the video. So let's get into the basics first and just start with the anatomy of a window. So you can see that it did open up in this windowed mode for me already because that's how I was using Safari but it's gonna be very similar to Mac OS or your desktop experience. So you have your three dots up here, you have your close, your minimize, and your enlarge. The close one will quit out of the application completely, just the same way that you would quit out of an application when you're multitasking, or when you go into the multitasking view. So if I swipe up on here, that's gonna be the same type of kind of experience as pressing the X button. Minimize does that, it'll minimize it down there, and then you can open it up, and it'll be exactly where you were before, and then lastly, you have the enlarge button where if you just tap it, it'll then give you all these different options on how you want to view that window. So you can go side by side view, you can go top to bottom, you can go full screen, again, in between, you can go triple box, you can go quad box, and you can enter the slide over mode, which we will touch on in a second. But the interesting thing here is that you can also long press on here to get the same options, but there's other ways to also interact with it. Because again, think about it. This is an iPad and this is a touch first interface. So if I do pull it off the magic keyboard and I have to use my finger, these are way too small. So what they've done is if you tap on here, it'll enlarge it, it'll give you a second to interact with it. And then I can either tap it on here to go larger, long press, or I can go to the side view here. So they've still made it intuitive enough to use your finger as your main input method with your iPad, with the windowing system, and with multitasking iPad OS 26. And then similar to how you would resize any other window with Mac OS, you do have this tab on the bottom right hand side to insinuate and let you know that, hey, you can actually move this around and resize it if you want to but it doesn't mean that you're stuck to resizing it only from that little nub. You can resize it from anywhere. You can resize it from here. You can resize it from up top if you want to. You can resize it diagonally from up here if you want to. So it works exactly the same. And you can see that it's moving very fluidly. There's nothing kind of breaking it up. It doesn't kind of transform into a different application or a different windowed size. You just give it a second to reload. And then boom, you have your Safari in whatever size that you want and however you see fit. And same thing goes with your finger. This is mostly for finger input and resizing. If you want to, so you go down here, you can resize it however you see fit. And it's very, very responsive. And just so you guys know, I am running 26.2 beta on here, which does bring a few new features, which we'll touch on in a little bit. But another way to interact with this is actually being able to hit the split view. So let me show you what that looks like. So we tap on here, long press, go to the left-hand side. You then go down here, open up another application. Let's say I want to open up X and it'll open up X on the right and left-hand side. So split view is here. And this has been around since the very beginning of 26.0, but people were a little bit iffy about it. I'm not hundred percent sure why, because you still have the little bar in the middle. So you're able to move this and resize it however you see fit. If you want to make it as small as you want, as you can see, it's moving out of the way and then coming back and it stays persistent and it's very, very intuitive. And same thing goes if you want to quad box it. So if I want to quad box, do one of these things. Let's say I want to open up something like Chrome, hold down on here, quad box that. And then the little bar shows up here as well. Now it doesn't show up vertically, so I can't move this up and down vertically. But if I have another one here, I can resize them however I see fit between the two. And then if you do want to get out of here, there's two ways, right? You can swipe up. And what that does is it flanks out the different windows on every side. So if you want to open up another one, let's say if I want to open up Apple TV, it'll open up Apple TV and then I can go like this, quad box it, and then I'm down on each side with all these four applications. But if you just want to go back to the home and get all of them out of the way, just swipe up twice and then you're back to your home screen without the windows being flanked here. And now there is a new expose mode. So for example, if I'm opening up a bunch of applications, if I have the notes application open, I have six apps open here. Let's say I want to open up something like the app store as well. I have seven apps open and you start to lose sight and function as to where these windows are. First off, you can have up to 12 windows open in one view. And if you just swipe up and go into multitasking, you get this expose view. So you're able to see all the different windows kind of sized appropriately the way that you want to. And if you have maybe an application that's all the way on the back behind all the applications, you just tap on the one that you want to pull forward. But now if you do want to have your slide over or your kind of persistent window, you just go over here, long press on the green button, enter slide over. And now you have this window that's always going to be here. As you can see, it has a kind of like outline to kind of indicate that, hey, this is not going anywhere at any time. So no matter what, if you try to bring something over here, if you want to bring this to the forefront, that won't happen because this is going to be persistent at all times. 
What you can do here is you can also resize it, you can move it around. So if I wanna resize it, make it smaller, make it bigger. And just so you are aware, this will stay persistent the whole time. And you can bring more apps and kind of replace it into it. So if I want to, I can grab a Safari window, bring it into here, and then it'll overtake what it was before. Now, the next thing I hope they bring is the ability to kind of swipe between a few of them, because right now you can't do that, but at least you know that you have a persistent window when it comes to this slide over. And of course, you can tuck it away like you could any other slide over window and then bring it right back however you see fit. Now, that slide over feature is available with 26.1, but now in 26.2, which we will receive in the next coming weeks, they did bring up split view, at least the way that we used to bring up split view. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is kind of wipe away and start over. So if I wanna bring up, let's say X right here, right? If I wanna make it bigger, I can enlarge that, or maybe I can do one of these where I move it over here and open up to the left-hand side. And now I can just bring up Safari and bring it over the way that we used to bring it over. And now I'm in split view. So that's one way to do it. There is another way to do it too, which is kind of interesting. So if I bring up, let's say Google Maps, Google Maps right now is in full screen mode and I can grab this and kind of flick it to one side. It'll take that up, bring this up again. And then let's say I want to grab the notes application, grab it over here, flick it to the other side. And now I am in split view as well. So there's a bunch of different ways to kind of access them. There's a lot of touch input first methods. There's a lot of trackpad and keyboard input methods. It's just a matter of playing with each of these and learning which nuance works better for you because there's like five different ways to enter split view now at this point between hitting the buttons up here, being able to drag and drop, and also being able to move it around with your finger and using inertia to get to wherever you need to get. And now you're probably asking, what about Spotlight? Because I use Spotlight a lot. So if I wanna pull up Spotlight, let's say I wanna pull up, uh, let's say maybe eBay, right? eBay is an application I like to use. I can actually just drag that over as well and it'll overtake what I was using before. And Spotlight works identically to how everything else works. So if you do wanna pull up an application for Spotlight, you can do that, or you can go down to your dock, or you can go to your dock and pull up, let's say something like the Files app, move it over and then do it that way as well. So there's a bunch of different ways to kind of figure this out. And you can see that the applications behind there are still back there in their own split view mode. And now in the very beginning, I did mention the ability to swipe between applications in that full windowed mode. And that functionality is still here with the windowing mode right here. So for instance, I have this full screen application open. If I swipe to the left, it opens up this one. And if I swipe again, then you can see that I have all my windowed applications over here, making it very easy to kind of go in between everything. So at least now we know that even though Apple maybe removed the you know traditional split view and the traditional slide over, they are back and just in a little bit of a different way and they're still accessible in your full iPad mode. You do not need to have a magic keyboard. You don't need to have a Bluetooth keyboard to do anything. They all work in tandem and you can use them however you see fit. Another little piece here that I did want to bring up that I found out is, you know, with Mac OS, if you control, if you press command Q, it quits out of an application. The same function will happen if you press command W to close out an application with iPad OS. I don't really know why that's the case, but at least I know that that's there. So you can see here that if I grab that and throw it, it'll turn into split view. I get the little bar in the middle, which comes up and then I'm able to kind of drag in between here. So again, I'm just very surprised how intuitive it is and how easy it is to use. And then multitasking, one last thing I want to bring up is, again, if you go into your multitasking, you know, you long press and long hold, you can see all these applications are kind of scattered throughout. But for instance, if I want to open up this one right here, I have this in my main window, my nine to five Mac Safari. And if I want to bring in something for my multitasking, all I have to do is look over here. Maybe I want to use my files app. All I have to do is tap on the files app and then it'll come over to the main window. So that's another way to kind of manage all the different windows that you have here. Now, a couple of things that I did want to bring up here because it kind of has to do with multitasking. The first one is going to be audio feeds, right? So if you do have two separate audio sources playing at the same time, unfortunately, one of them will be paused because that's still a restraint of iOS and iPad OS and how that all functions. So if I look up a video right here, let's go to nine to five Mac. And then for instance, if I pull up, let's say YouTube TV, kind of bring this over here, let it do its thing. If I start playing a video from YouTube TV, it's going to pause this video right here, as you can see right there. So unfortunately, you can only have one video and one audio feed going at the same time when it comes to multitasking over here. Another thing to take into consideration here that's not very Mac OS like is that yes, the M series iPad, so the M iPad Air and the M iPad Pro do support extended monitors. So you can extend a monitor and have a secondary display no matter how big or how small that secondary display is. And it actually scales beautifully. The non M series iPads like the iPad mini and the iPad 11, you can still put out to an external display. It'll just mirror what you currently have going on on the iPad display. But if you go into clamshell mode and close this when you are using extended monitor support, it'll actually just close it out completely and you cannot work in clamshell mode, unfortunately, which is again, very unmac like at the end of the day. But those are just some of the limitations that I've seen. But overall, the iPad, in my opinion, for a lot of people can replace what 
at Mac does for most people. The windowing modes and all the different functions do work extremely well. For example, something that I use all the time is the ability to go into LumaFusion and export a file while having it running in the background, whereas previously I wasn't able to do that because it would just quit out of the application and then it would quit the export completely, which is something that was very annoying. So now I can actually let LumaFusion export something while editing something in Infinity Photo because again, Affinity Photo will work on a smaller kind of window and then I can have LumaFusion in the background exporting everything. But that's everything that I wanted to bring up from a windowing mode and I'm sure it's going to evolve as we go along with 26.2 and then eventually iPadOS 27. But let's finish up this video. So as you saw, there's a ton of nuance with iPadOS 26. There's a bunch of changes that are happening and it continues to evolve with 26 versus 26.2 where they brought slide over and split view back. But my goal with this video was to kind of help people understand that yes, even though there's a new multitasking form, if you still want to use your iPad as an iPad, you can still definitely do that. But now you have the best of both worlds and the option to then go over here, which is where I want to live in, which is to use your iPad Pro or any iPad for that matter as a computer replacement with all the new multitasking windowing modes and everything that comes with that. But let me know in the comment down below what you think. Are you a fan of iPadOS 26? I've heard that people are holding out on updating to 26 because they don't want to lose what they have with iPadOS 18 and things of that nature. Always curious to know where your stance is with iPadOS and I have a whole complete walkthrough coming out soon on how iPadOS 26 has completely revitalized my use of the iPad Pro and kind of how I work it inside of my workflow. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. Big shout out to Nomad for sponsoring this video and partnering up with 9 to 5 Mac. If you guys want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these right here. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments so I know you made it all the way to the end. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace. I love iPadOS 26. If you don't, I think it'll grow on you.